Do do di. It's Nandi. Hello, friends. In today's video, we'll take a look at Macer the Jackal. He's the second World Eaters character that comes to Tacticus, and I've really been enjoying using and testing him out. You'll be familiar with the template that I use for these character release videos. First, we'll go over the kits and stats, and then take a look at the abilities in action before doing some deeper analysis about where the character might excel. Macer is a World Eaters Jackal, another name for the human cultists who venerate Corrin. They are ferocious fighters that accompany the Chaos Space Marines into battle. On their back, each jackal wears a tank containing combat stims, which further enhance each warrior's prowess. In terms of traits, Macer has two. He enjoys the Blessing of Corn faction trait, which means that he deals 3% more damage and receives 8% less psychic damage for each unit that was defeated in melee this battle. This stacks up to 8 times, capping out at a 24% damage increase and a 64% psychic damage reduction. Macer also has the Resilient trait, which we'll be familiar with by now. The stats on screen are at Diamond 3. I'll take a closer look later on to show you how this compares to other characters in the game. Macer has a movement speed of 3, but I'll just point out his armor value here of just over 1000 at Diamond 3 makes him among the lowest in the game. His attack is a melee chain attack with 3 hits. Macer's active ability is called Jackal Stims. This deals 4 hits of physical damage to an adjacent enemy and also does splash damage, affecting other enemies adjacent to both Macer and his target. Macer loses 25% of his current health and then is able to immediately attack again. Yes, you've read that correctly, Macer loses health through his active ability. When we look at Macer's passive ability, we understand why. Skull Smasher gives Macer bonus damage based on every 10% of his maximum health that he has lost. At level 50, this is 200 damage per 10% health lost. Macer obviously can't do damage if he's dead, so this adds 1800 damage to every single one of Macer's hits at level 50, provided he is below 10% health. If Macer has already defeated an enemy in battle, then he also stuns his target. Let's take a look at these things in more depth with gameplay footage. Here, Macer faces off against a small squad of the Tau Empire. Macer approaches and uses his active ability, Jackal Stims. You can see that here he is targeting Sho, but there are also purple hexes around Shadow Sun and Rivas, demonstrating that they will also be affected by this splash attack. It does pretty massive damage against a host of Diamond 3 characters, and I'll go more into the math later on. Straight away, Macer is able to make a further attack. Here he uses it to attack and kill Shadow Sun. The Tau try and take their turn next, but they are too stunned by the annihilation of their glorious leader that the turn simply cycles back to Macer. Next, Macer attacks Rivas, demonstrating his passive ability, Skull Smasher. After being attacked, Rivas has the stunned debuff, the most potent in the game. Her damage is reduced by 50%, she is unable to use active abilities, and her movement is reduced to 1. Combine that with close combat weakness, and Rivas is really in for a bad time. There's a lot more depth to Macer and his abilities than appear on the surface. The astute among you will have noticed that Macer's damage stat on the top right of the screen is not incrementing as he is losing life. You can see here that the mouse over damage for Rivas is 4117. The damage stat for Macer is at 2874 up in the top right. After Rivas attacks Macer again, the mouse over damage is now up to 5594. However, the damage stat for Macer remains unchanged up in the top right. In the test build, we can create artificial testing environments, and I have done so here against the Bloodletter. We know that Bloodletters have zero armor, so I have given it 1 million health to test Macer's abilities. I am also resetting Macer's active every time. We can see here that as Macer's health falls, the damage dealt with his active ability increases, telling us that his passive works to increase the active ability damage. In addition, it appears for the purposes of damage calculation, his health loss occurs before he deals damage with his physical active ability, so he gains an additional 400 damage at level 50. The next clip is a short one just showing you that Macer can attack a melee target with his active ability and still move and attack another one. In other words, he doesn't lose his movement after using the active ability. There's even more to love about Macer. Here we can see Macer killing a drone. The wording on his passive ability specifies that it just wants him to kill an enemy, not necessarily a character. On the following turn, when Macer then goes in and decides to use his splash active attack, every character hit is stunned. 
I mean, I'm not sure how much more you need, but being able to potentially stun three characters in a single turn is better than anything anyone in the game can currently do thus far. I'm particularly excited for this against AI defences in War and Arena, who have a tendency to clump together. It doesn't stop there. Macer also works with Onshi, who allows him to recharge his active ability and have it used twice in one turn. Next up, let's do a bit of math and analysis, which I know you guys love. Diamond 3 average armor is 1930. Macer's active does an average of 3000 damage, but we also know that it gains a further 400 damage from his passive through the earlier gameplay. So after our damn bar calculation, it looks like each hit does about 1500 damage. Four hits through his active ability therefore takes us up to 6000 damage. Now we also get to use the free extra attack. Here we get to add 400 damage because of the passive ability, taking Macer's damage up to 3300 with a 20% chain attack. After Danvar, that takes us to 1.4k damage per hit. 3 hits brings this attack total to 4200. We can add the two numbers together for a total of 10200 damage and see that Macer very comfortably kills an average Diamond 3 character. This obviously doesn't account for the splash damage through his active or any other bonuses that you might get like critical hits or Eldrion's buff. There are lots of ways to make Macer and his abilities stronger, and I'm particularly excited about adding Ragnar's active, Warhull, which works very well with both Macer's active and normal attack. So we've demonstrated that he is a very powerful PvP character. What about guild raids? Ernst, Tacticus Ambassador and Friend has kindly put together some footage here against Rogel Dorn at Epic 5 difficulty. Macer demonstrates his usefulness here alongside Ragnar and the ability to make multiple hits on the same turn against the Rogel Dorn rear armor. Macer does pretty well here, and there are clearly some innate boss mechanics that make Macer an attractive option, particularly if you don't have other meta characters like Kalgar. However, we think Macer will potentially shine the most against guild bosses that have a bit more lethality and deal more damage over the course of the battle. If you're able to take advantage of his passive damage, then you'll get a lot more bang for your buck. The trick is finding the sweet spot where Macer will take lots of damage, but also survive until the end of the fight. This is my usual infographic that I make for new characters. His stats courtesy of Tawin show that his health is in the 70th centile. His armor is in the bottom centile, tied with Volk for the lowest in the game. His damage stats are okay at baseline, 52nd centile, but where he shines is obviously in conjunction with his abilities. Where do I think Macer will do best? I think he's pretty amazing in PvP, and I already like the idea of using him alongside Ragnar in particular for a massive damage boost. Macer's active and basic attack have already been shown to one-shot an average character of the same rarity and gear level. However, with Ragnar's active, there is so much more potential to punch through even heavily armored targets or those with lots of health, like we see in Guild War. I'm cautiously optimistic for Macer in Guild Raid, if we can find a way to control the damage that he takes and optimize his passive. With the full stacks of passive, Macer is the seventh highest damage stat in the game. Clearly he works well with Ragnar, but I'll be interested to see if he works alongside the newer World Eater characters that have yet to come in the game. His kit is beautifully designed, and I'm looking forward to playing with him. That's all I've got for today. Let me know your thoughts on Macer in the comments below. I wanted to give a big shout out to Ernst. He's been invaluable in his insights and assistance, and I wouldn't be able to make the content that I do without his help. I'd love if you could consider entering his referral code as shown on screen. It earns you 100 Blackstone and supports me in the work that I do. It is single use though, so choose who you support carefully. Bye for now. Doo -doo -dee. It's Nandi.